Hello, uh, in today's video lecture, we are going to uh, build off our previous discussion of trusses and um, uh, understand uh, a new way to uh, analyze equilibrium within truss structures known as the method of sections and also talk about a way to uh, understand what happens to equilibrium in large truss structures when we combine simple trusses together. So uh, remember the method of joints was a two-step process uh, in which you found all the external and internal forces. Uh, in step one, you use the free body diagram of an entire of the entire truss, and then the corresponding equilibrium equations, action forces, and moments. In step two, you look each applied um, all the forces, including within the members, used Newton's third law, and uh, to find the forces through those uh, through those members. Uh, in the method of sections, um, often it is useful uh, to uh, be able to find very easily the force within one particular member in a complex truss structure. And that's where the method of sections comes in handy. Unlike the method of joints, where you calculate uh, you know the forces in every member of the truss. Here we're going to be interested, for example, in finding the force in member BD, and for that we're going to learn how to apply the method of uh, sections. So what this method involves is that it involves you breaking up the truss into individual sections and then as a rigid body. So you can think of this cut and end that I have made here that splits the truss into two and then we can choose either one to do our analysis uh, for example for the force in member BD. So in this case we're going to choose the the left hand side and then you can see um, what I've done here is drawn the free body diagram of this new uh, rigid structure made by the slicing process or the sectioning process and so at point B I have two unknown forces which correspond to members BD and BE and at C I have an unknown force which corresponds to member CE. So we have three cuts in this particular case. We made three cuts, uh, or rather we cut three members, and each one gives us uh, an unknown, and so we have three unknowns. And since uh, we have three equilibrium equations, we are in good shape to go ahead and find the unknown forces. So take a moment here and uh, try and answer this question. Can you write down one equation that uh, allows us to find equilibrium uh, allows us to find the force FBD. So just write down one equation. So pause the video here and think about it and then come back to see the answer. The answer is yes and it's the moment about point E because FBE and FCE both point into E and so the moment about E for these unknowns is zero and so the only uh, unknown now will be our force FBD that's acting about point E uh, given that we know the loads P1 and P2 and the dimensions involved in our calculation. So in general, uh, when you do a sectioning, you want to cut as few members as possible. You want to find the force in this section. So here's an example of another cut. And in this case, you've, we've taken the cut along. You can see it. Um, uh, four members. So the question is, would this be a good choice? Well, the answer is, it may not be a good choice, but it is okay to make a cut like this because it creates a separate section. Uh, the reason it's not a good choice is because now you you are having four different unknowns here uh, in your calculation. Likewise, this is also acceptable. A cut like this, where you have a curved cut, uh, because you are essentially still creating a separate section. Let's go ahead and apply our understanding to an example problem. And in this case here, we have a truss that is given um, and we are told to find the force in member GI, which is shown right here. And we are going to use the method of sections. And so remember, method of sections has two parts. Step one is to find uh, the uh, reaction forces at L. In this case, we have a joint diagram of the entire truss. And then we'll go ahead and make a section here, calculate uh, the free body diagram of, let's say, the, the right-hand side here 
in order to be able to find member GE. So step one is entire trust and step two is the appropriate section. In this case, we'll use section NN as well. So let's look at step one, which is the free body of the entire trust. So we know that force uh, is going to be along the X and the Y direction. And so we can um, uh, find the moment about A because we have two unknowns So uh, applying moment about A and L is 7.5 kilonewtons. You can see the first term here corresponds to the fact that I have this one kilonewton force and a force. and so that gives me my first moment and likewise all the other terms. And to find uh, the forces along A now, I'm going to write down the equilibrium in the X and the Y directions for the forces and that very easily readily gives us um, uh, the, the two remaining uh, unknown forces Ay, which is 12.5 kilonewtons pointing upwards and Ax being zero. Now we come to step two in the method of sections. And now this is our free body diagram for the right hand side. And you can see we have three unknowns, Gi, Gh, and Fh. And Gi. So the question here is, can you write down one equilibrium equation that gives us this force FGI? So pause the video here and think through it, and then come back to check the answer. The answer is that if you write the moment about point H, we are eliminating the two unknowns FH and GH, and so uh, we can write down um, quickly that uh, moment about H is, uh, is written in this equation here with only one unknown, which is FGI. And so we get uh, a value of FGI as 13.13 kilonewtons. And uh, see if you can now go ahead and do this analysis to find out the values of the forces FH and GH and show that they are given by these quantities here. And you can see from the sign that the original assignment of FH was actually um, uh, final force is going to look uh, to be in this direction. Likewise for FGH it's going to be pointing in that direction. Okay, next let's move to this idea of compound trusses. So remember a simple truss is a large rigid truss made by combining uh, two new members and one existing truss. Uh, and so we made a new triangle from the old triangle and point. And that uh, also allows us to um, use this expression here that relates uh, the number of members to a number of joints. Now the other way to think about it is that at each joint we uh, if we have and if you think of m as the number of unknowns if the number of unknowns equals uh, this equation here then uh, we are going to be uh, looking uh, we're going to be finding that the truss can be in equilibrium and can be determined, uh, all the forces can be determined. Now let's look at this rigid truss structure shown here. Um, a, B and C is one simple truss while D, E and F is another simple truss and we've joined them together with these three bars B, D, B, E and C, E. And uh, this truss is called a, a fink truss and the question is whether this is a simple truss or not. And the answer is no, because uh, you will not be able to construct this entire truss using the approach that we outlined earlier, where you're adding only two members and one joint as you continue to build the truss. Right? However, this is a truss that is made by connecting simple trusses. Definition of a compound truss. Now let's look at the idea of um, of compound trusses in terms of determinacy and stability.